So I just got done watching a YouTube video called Red Dead Radio episode 20 and you can find that video over on Hop, Blip and Jump's YouTube channel, a channel run by Jared Petty and he is a former video game journalist and he as well as John Ryan from IGN have both gone to see Red Dead Redemption 2 for a collective four hours, two hours each hands on with the game. Now I'm going to link the channel down below in the description for any of you guys who want to go over there and take a look at the video for yourselves. But the details Details that they've provided in this video or podcast shall we say really pleasantly surprised me. They went over some of the NPC interactions, the shops, the weapons, the combat and everything that you guys are going to enjoy. So one first important note is that almost confirmed by John Ryan, a guest on the show, it's pretty clear that you can't kill children as far as we're aware. It seems like you can't lasso them either. John Ryan said during his two hour demo of the game he came across an older child or young teenager around the age of 12 or 13. After riding by, it was clear that the young boy wasn't looking for conversation. He was heartbroken because his girlfriend or his crush had just broken his heart and he was supposedly heard moaning about this particular girl by the riverside of which he was located. John Ryan said that he decided to play mean and constantly antagonise the child through the social interaction menu. I found it pretty funny myself antagonising this young child who's done nothing wrong, but the interaction felt real. The child was stunned that Arthur was being so direct and brutal in the presence of him. He said that through pressuring the child he met, the reaction felt so real that he even feels bad about it for berating the child and antagonising him so much. He also said he kicked a man in the head during his playthrough on horseback and the reactions in the town weren't like GTA where people run off and go, hey I'm gonna go and tell the police. Oh they didn't run off screaming either. The man was like, wait, what's wrong with you? Why would you do that? And all those reactions are so real, so believable that you can even get sucked into actually feeling empathy, sympathy and regret for your actions in the game. The end of the story is that the child began to walk off in a mood from being treated so badly by Arthur Morgan. Well, John Ryan decided to make Arthur follow the boy and the boy began to get scared and started to run. He said he tried lassoing the child, but since it was considered a child in the game, the feature was not available, thus confirming to us that children will not be killable in the game and I I agree with this decision that Rockstar Games have made. Personally, I feel like being able to kill children in video games is wrong on step one anyway, you know, as point A. But point B is also that if it was available, Rockstar Games would have a very big and expensive lawsuit coming down on them very soon. So I like the idea of children being in the game, but I also agree it's great that they've made it so you can't kill them. Although that might ruin your immersion, that may be the only thing that ruins your immersion. It's not confirmed yet if you can or cannot kill them but I would guess from that statement that John Ryan said um, you cannot. Another amazing feature Jared and John got to see throughout the two hours is the ability to hide dead bodies. If you kill someone and hide their body you'll get blood all over you depending on where they were shot. If you shot someone in the stomach and you sling them over your shoulder to hide them in the nearby woods, the blood will go all over your clothes and you'll then become a more suspicious individual. But it won't just simply wash off. If you go into town with that blood on you, people will be scared, they'll start avoiding you and be hesitant to talk to you. Of course, hiding bodies is a key element to the game and it's something you'll need to do to avoid being caught. If you choose not to hide a dead body, you may want to take a different route home that avoids the main tracks and roads because people may see you and then tip you off to the police. Another really awesome thing is that the shops have been detailed to an immense level we also never knew about before. According to both of the guys on Red Dead Radio, we can go into the stores and even buy items such as spurs, chaps, suspenders, hats, gloves, bandanas and other items all completely separately of each other and any outfits. There will also be sections and subcategories within clothing stores and catalogues separate from the main articles of clothing themselves. You can 100% customise any and every aspect of your character. You can purchase pre-made outfits for Arthur and adapt certain elements of your style or you can just completely create your own outfit from different t-shirts, trousers, suspenders, hats and so on. The level of detail is so unbelievable that each item within the catalogue has its own description, details and selling points and it feels like I could definitely spend hours and hours just looking at clothing and weapons in the game. Of course if you want you can go in, quick select and buy a ton of guns or ammunition but the option is there for those of you who want to read it. When we talk about the catalogue in shops where we buy clothes and guns we're not talking about a gun, a paragraph, a gun, 
a paragraph, we're talking pages and pages upon pages of different items and weapons. And the guys on Red Dead Radio said they wouldn't be surprised if there is hundreds of different variants and styles for us to purchase. One really great thing that he saw was a man changing the shoe on his horse, aka basically doing a farrier job. The guy was having trouble, so Arthur came over and stopped and said, hey, do you want any help with that? The guy explained that he was having trouble changing the horseshoe, so of course he naturally accepted Arthur's offer to give him a hand. But just as the NPC was putting down the horse's leg, according to Ryan, the horse freaked out and kicked the farrier in the head. Now he said the most powerful element to this game is the fact that he didn't laugh. He didn't wait to see what happened next. He didn't walk away. He physically felt guilty. He wanted that NPC to stand back up. They were bonding, they were chatting. If Arthur Morgan had have asked him for help maybe a few minutes later, this guy wouldn't be dead. And it's interactions just like this, the butterfly effect, where maybe things will go wrong or right depending on the decisions you make, that make the game feel so believable and real. They did touch on the combat as well, and this is something I am very excited about myself. One of the guys was taking cover behind a wagon in combat. Just picture any random object, a box, a barrel, a wagon here for example. Now the game didn't instruct Jared to take cover behind this, nor did it promote the use of cover during combat itself. And this wasn't a scripted event, but the first shot an enemy fired towards Jared went through the wood and blew the panel to pieces just inches away from Arthur's head. Destructible environment and bullet penetration is going to be very real in this game. Like I said, this wasn't scripted, it just so happened that the cover that he was taking, which was a wooden wagon, the bullet went right through the side of it and rip the wood to pieces right in front of his face startling him completely and this is just another one of the reasons why I think this game is going to be amazing come October the 26th. That's basically a quick roundup of all the best points that I found myself. They did go into more details about the interaction menu as well. Anyway, that's everything from me today, guys. I hope you did enjoy today's video. Go to the description and watch Red Dead Radio's podcast, episode 20, where they talk about playing Red Dead Redemption 2 hands-on. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay cool, stay awesome, and adios.